My name is JP Gervais and I am the Chief Agricultural Economist at Farm Credit Canada. My role is to provide economic analysis to help our customers understand the drivers of agri-food markets, as well as to drive good business strategy at FCC. Well, a stock to use ratio provides an idea of the balance between supply and demand. The bottom line is that supply and demand matter a great deal when explaining prices. Markets are complicated and are influenced by a number of different factors. The stock to use ratio for a commodity summarizes these factors into a single measure. That's quite powerful. Formally, a stock to use ratio is the level of inventory of a commodity at a point in time expressed as a share of everything that is being used. For example, saying that a stock to use ratio is projected to be 15% at the end of the marketing year means that inventories will be 15% of everything that was used in the supply chain. Total use can be impacted by the demand for animal feed, human consumption and exports. As total use increases, it lowers the stock to use ratio. Note that some analysts will translate that stock to use ratio measure into the number of days that supply is available in the marketplace. The higher the ratio, the more supply there is available. A lower ratio indicates a tighter supply situation. Well, markets will react to information in a stock-to-use ratio. For example, the USDA releases monthly their analysis of supply and demand conditions in a report called the WASDE report, W-A-S-D-E. It often has a major impact in markets. It can reveal to buyers that supply is getting tighter than previously estimated and thus result in higher prices. Or you can tell sellers that consumption is slowing down and suggest lower prices in the future. Short term, the information provides meaningful insight for producers' marketing plans. Well, suppose we are in the middle of the summer and that we are interested in understanding market prospects for corn in the U.S. Growing conditions in the U.S. will give an indication of potential yields. Combining this information with estimates of seeded acres will result in expectation of total production in the current year. The available supply for the upcoming year will be the available stocks at the end of the last marketing year plus the incoming supply. Now let's build an expectation of what total demand of corn will be in the next marketing year. This will be based on anticipated production of ethanol, projected exports, feed, use for domestic processing, etc. Available supply minus total demand will yield a projection of the end of year stocks. That projection divided by total demand will be the stock to use ratio. Look at the chart. It illustrates the patterns in the U.S. corn stock to use ratio with an expectation of what it could be like at the end of the 2015-16 marketing year. Prices in the marketplace will be based off this ratio. Now suppose there's a major change in the demand for U.S. exports of corn. Let's say a huge anticipated increase. Total usage will climb and the stock to use ratio will fall as there are expectations of smaller stocks and greater use at the end of the year leading you to believe that prices will climb. The bottom line is a stock to use ratio yields significant insights to build marketing strategies for grains and oilseeds.